Hello, everyone. We appreciate you joining us for uh, this Wednesday afternoon. I hope you're all warm and toasty or nice and uh, nice and cool, wherever you may be. Today, Jerry Davies, one of our senior uh, library consultants, is going to be giving a, an overview of IBM Cognos reports for Carl.Solution. Before I pass it over to Jerry, I'll mention a few housekeeping items first. We are recording, so if you want to share this with your colleagues or watch it again, um, the, the link will be available on our website. Uh, but since you're joining us live, you have the opportunity to ask questions. Please feel free to use the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen throughout the presentation. Uh, so with that, Jerry, welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Okay. Thank you very much, Ashley. Okay. So um, as I said, Ashley Chasse there, Jerry Davies, uh, TLC. Uh, what we're going to look at this afternoon uh, for about 20, 25 minutes is Cognos reports for Carl. Cognos is IBM's business intelligence suite. Um, we have been uh, building uh, reports in our library.solution product for several years now. We have over 300 reports in there, and now we are adopting Cognos for Carl as well. Uh, and Carl will be uh, adopting Cognos to use as its canned reports in the future will slowly migrate across to Cognos for that. Um, Cognos also offers reports authoring, um, building ad hoc reports into the system. And uh, I'll be showing you that this afternoon. And uh, it allows you to organize your reports by folders as well. So you can create library wide uh, folders in the system that many people can see. And then you can also create uh, folders for yourself uh, that can be personal or confidential folders as well for confidential reporting. So with that, let's go ahead and have a look at what we're doing there. Uh, Cognos Reports, uh, most importantly, offers scheduling. You can set a report and forget about it. You can set it up to run on a particular day of the week, a particular day of the month, a particular uh, date of the month, and it will just run automatically. And you can set it up to run until you say stop. So that's wonderful for your operational reports, where essentially you just want to set it and forget it and say, OK, my people need this every Monday morning. Boom. And it will arrive for them. So apart from the uh, scheduling of reports, uh, there's also the delivery of those reports as well. Now, obviously, with any reports writer, you can go into the uh, the application itself and, and see reports and launch them. Uh, but what Cognos allows you to do is to deliver those reports um, as attachments in an email. So for example, we can set up and send a PDF to a board president prior to a board meeting, um, the same record, report could be sent as a spreadsheet to a director or an assistant director. Uh, and so you have multiple formats that you can send reports in. And again, they can be scheduled. So with that, uh, also reports authoring. Um, what we've provided here, we've been working diligently in the last year on a data dictionary uh, for the Carl database, which gives you understandable field names. So you can go in, find field names that make sense to you. Um, you'll pull those from a, a data tree on the left hand side and you would literally drag and drop them into the report. Uh, now, that would require two days of remote training from us uh, to give you an idea of that. Um, even if you have SQL knowledge, you probably want to have that training as well. Okay. Now, uh, with that, uh, although drag and drop is there within uh, Cognos, uh, you also have the ability to write SQL statements. And if you wish, you can insert SQL statements into a drag and drop uh, report as well to inform some of the queries that you're creating. Um, the other thing there, uh, and this is something that um, will be a benefit uh, as we move towards Cognos, is that as we write these reports uh, and put them into our CAN reports, you'll be able to go in and edit those reports, uh, see them and edit them and fit your uh, precise needs. So with that, uh, we will go off and have a look at the software. Um, I think what I want to do then is we will start by spending five, six, seven or eight minutes 
uh, and I'll go through writing an ad hoc report. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, creating a report to find duplicate patrons. Uh, once we've done that, we'll go off and we'll have a look at some other reports that are in the system. We'll look at some CAN reports, and then we'll dive under the hood and we will see how those reports are being built. Um, we'll also see how we schedule a report and then how we can go into our own um, um, user account and monitor all the reports that we've created and scheduled, and we can monitor how those are being delivered. Okay, so that's where we are. Uh, I'm going to escape out of this, and we will go into Cognos. So I'm going to log into Cognos. Again, as you see, it's web-based. Um, and I'm just going to start by let's create an ad hoc report. Um, I'll explain what I'm doing along the way, but I am not going to spend too much time on it. I want to give you an idea of how straightforward it is. OK, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to say create a new report. Um, I have to use a template for this, and I'm going to create a, temp a blank template. And I have to select a data source. Where am I going to find the data I want? And I'm going to go into reports packages and call uh, reports package. So I'm going to select that and open it. Now, what I need to do now is I need to create a container. Now, I'm going to create a report that's a list, but if I wanted, I could also create visual reports or tables uh, or other things as well. But in this case, I'm going to create a list. And I'm going to go up and create a query. So this is going to be my main query, and I am going to rename this, and I am going to call it possible duplicate patrons. Okay. All right. Now, this duplicate patrons uh, query that I'm going to create is actually going to be fed by a number of other queries. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another query, and I am going to call this patrons one. Okay. Now, I now need to select some fields uh, to populate this particular query. So I double click on patrons. I go over here to my sources. And each one of these is a table with multiple fields in it. Okay. You see that the majority of them make relatively good sense. What I'm looking for here is patrons, and I'm looking for patrons V2. And I'm going to open that, and now you see the individual fields within that particular table. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a report to find duplicate patrons. That is patrons who've been registered twice. Uh, and I'm going to do that, first of all, by looking for patrons with multiple IDs. So I'm just going to double click on that. I am also going to add registration date. I can drag that in. I'm also going to add birth date. I'm going to use that as a way of checking for duplicates. And then I'm going to go further down, and I'm going to add first name and last name. OK, now I go back to my report. I'm going to go to my queries, and there's patrons one. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to run the query twice and compare the differences between them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have two queries, and they're going to be able to allow me to highlight where um, a patron with the same with the same last name and the same birth date appear to have two uh, distinct um, patron IDs. So I'm going to create another copy of that and paste that. Now I've got patron one and patron two. So this is my report I'm creating, and I'm going to join it. And what I'm going to do here is, as I said, I am going to run these two queries together, and I'm going to use the differences between them to inform and create my list of uh, duplicate patrons. So with this, this is a join. You see, I've got these other ones here. I can have unions and intersects. I can insert SQL statements in there as well. But I'm going to do a join, and uh, it should be fairly intuitive what I'm doing here. I'm going to create a link. And what I want to do is I want to say, OK, show me, uh, I want to link the first query birth date with the birth date in the second query. I also want to link the last name in the first query, patron one, with the last name in patron two. And then the last one I'm going to do is I'm going to link the patron ID between the two queries. 
Now, what I want to do then is I want to see, OK, when does the last name in this query match this query? Where does the birth date match in the two? But where does the patron ID, even those these two match, where does the ID differ? So for that, I'm going to go in and convert an expression. And you see, I want birth date in patrons one to equal patron two. I want last name in patron one to equal patron two, but I don't want patron ID to match. And I'm just gonna put that operator in. There is also an operator field that you can use as well, but I wanted to show you that. Now that's an expression I've created and I've got validation that I can use to make sure that that's correct. And it looks like it's good. So at this point, I'm going to click OK. So now I've said query one, query two, patron one, patron two, feed them together and highlight where, although they have the same last name and they have the same birth date, they have different patron IDs. And that's going to feed into possible patron, possible duplicate patrons. So I'm going to click on that. And now I have to build those particular fields I want for that. So I'm just going to populate it from one of the other queries I did from patron one. OK, so now I've got the data there. The next thing I need to do is I need to now define what what do I see on the screen? I've got the data, but how do I want to display it? So here I go to report and I go to pages, page one. And I go over to my insertable objects. I don't want patron one. I don't want patron two. I want the combination of them that I just created. And I want to do it in this order. I want last name. I want first name. I want birth date. I want patron ID. And I want registration date. OK, now to make this easier, I'm going to sort these. Um, and I'm going to sort it by last name, Ascendi. OK, and at this point, I can click run and I'll run that report. And now you see I've got sorted by name. So we can see here I've got a John Burns and a James Burns, same birth date, different registrations, different IDs. Here I am as Jerry Davis and Gerard Davies, same birth date, different IDs. So this is a report that will allow me to identify all of my du potential duplicate report, uh, duplicate patrons. OK, so I've created this brief ad hoc report here. What I can do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save this as, um, let's call it my um, September duplicate patrons report. And I am going to put that into my own folder. Uh, and I've got multiple folders in my own folder. Uh, so I'm going to put it in my duplicates folder. And at that point, I am going to save it. OK, so now I've saved that report. OK, let's go in and have a look at it. So I'm going to go to content. I can go to team content, or I, which is essentially library wide. Uh, reports. We'll come back to that in a minute, but I'm going to go to my content and I have a folder here for duplicates. And now I see my September duplicate patrons report. What I want to do now is I want to set a schedule for this report so I don't have to go in and run this all the time. Okay. Maybe this is a report. I know I've called it September, but um, maybe this is a duplicate report that I want to run monthly. So what I can do here is I click on the three little dots there, and I am going to go in and edit the properties for it. So I'm going to give it a description. And I'm going to call this monthly duplicate patrons report. OK. I'm going to go to report, uh, prompt for values. No, there aren't any values to prompt. I'm going to go to schedule, schedule, and I'm going to create the schedule. OK, so do I want this to be a weekly, monthly, yearly, or do I want it daily or, or have it trigger by an event? I'm going to want to run this monthly. Do I want to, it to run on the first of the month? No, I want to run it on the first Tuesday of the month. 
I want it to run indefinitely. There is no end date. I'm going to go to my options. Now, what, what formats would I like this report in? And I'm going to say I want this in HTML and I want to put it also in Excel. How do I want this delivered? I could save this as a report and save it as a report view. That would enable people who have access to Cognos to log into Cognos and see the report and run it. Or maybe um, it's scheduled, but they still have to go into Cognos and run it. But that isn't all of my users. Many of my users need this information, but they don't necessarily want to have to log into Cognos, or they may not have a login for Cognos. So what I can do here is I can say, I want to send this by email. Okay. Notice I can send it by mobile device as well, if I wish. So I'm going to save this report as a PDF and an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to email it. Who do I want to email it to? Well, it's going to be emailed to myself, but I'm going to also send it Search the directory, library administrators. Okay. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say a new version of duplicate patrons report. Um, please check on our monthly basis for duplicate patrons message. I'm okay with that. Do I want any other prompts? No, I don't. And I'm going to save that. Okay. Now I've saved that report and it's scheduled. Okay. Now at this point, let's just go over to my personal menu. I can go and look at my schedules and subscriptions. Uh, do I want to close without saving? Uh, no, I want to save that. Unable to load requested view. Okay. So I'm just going to go in uh, my schedules and I go to scheduled reports. And we'll just kill that. <laughs> First phone call of the day, and it happens now. So with that, now what you're seeing is I've got my enabled reports and I've got three disabled reports. And here they are below. So I can go in and look at this enabled, disabled report here, if I wish, and I could enable that. But what I'm doing here is I have the ability to manage all the reports that I've scheduled and decide the priority, uh, when they are going to run, and um, essentially whether they're enabled or not. So again, a very useful tool for enabling reports. The whole idea here with Cognos is that you can set up reports and again, set it and forget it. And they get just get delivered with minimal overhead uh, in terms of staff time. Okay, so there's the schedules uh, for reports. Let's go off and have a look at a few other things. So I'm going to go back and we will uh, go to content. And we'll have a look uh, in team content. Go to Carl reports. And let's look at circulation by branches. So I'm going to run this report. I'm going to select all of my locations. I can select a date range or a previous thing. Let's put a date range in there. Let's do that from the 1st of January until today. I'm going to include all transaction types. And I'm going to run that report. And you saw how quickly that was delivered. OK, so that's that. Now, let's go back and look at how that report was actually created. I'm going to go over here and edit. Now, I have editing rights, and not all of your users would have that. But I can go in and look at the report. I can go to the queries. And now you can see in this particular report, uh, these are the queries that have been created, circulation by branch, circulation by branch list, branches, media, system codes, branch groups, and such like. And you'll see that these have actually, in this case, been fed by SQL statements. OK, so again, this is an example of feeding a report from an SQL statement. OK. So uh, let's go back and um, edit out of that. And I think I did I run that report? I'm trying to remember if I actually ran it or not. So let's uh, do that. 
And yes, I did. OK, right. So let's go off and have a, have a look at another one here. Uh, we're going to go to content. And we're going to look at circulation. Car reports. And we're going to look at circulation by branch this time, but as a pie report, a uh, pie chart. So uh, again, the same report, but a little bit different. And I'm going to select all. This time, uh, yeah, let's do the date range below one more time. From January the 1st until today, and we're going to include all transactions and I'm going to hit finish. There's my report. I'm going to go to the bottom. And now you see I've got a pie chart uh, for that report. So again, summarizing the statistics I had in the previous pages, and I can go over and highlight those and see the values for each one of these. Okay, let's go back, look at a few more. I'm going to go to content again. And uh, let's have a look at books long on the shelf. So what I'm going to do here is um, going to edit that report. Look at the queries. And this is the query. Now, it looks complicated. It's not that bad. What's going on here is I have created a query with items in it. I've created a query with titles. I've combined them into a query called items and titles. I then put that up here as items and titles. I have then created a query of all my branches and put that there. So now I'm combining my items and titles with my branches, combining them together, and that will then display items on the shelf. So I could go on and look at that. And those are the data elements that are there. OK, and I could go back. And here I am looking at those. OK, so that's books long on the shelf. And let's go back and look at one other one. I'm going to go to content here. And we will look at distinct users in the last 365 days. So I, I can just run that. Notice how quickly these reports are running. Now, I, we don't have a lot of transaction data in there, but there is a lot of bibliographic and item data in uh, in this demonstration system. And, and given that we're running this within the Cognos environment, you see that there's more than enough power for you to run Cognos at any time of the day or night. You don't have to schedule these uh, at an off time. You can run some fairly silly uh, all-encompassing reports uh, in the middle of the day without having to concern uh, about the impact of uh, circulation response times when you're using Cognos. So, and again, here we have it, and you've got, I've got my breakdown of all my different things. So there's a brief overview of some of the things that we can do within Cognos, okay? Uh, and again, going back to content, uh, with my team content, I can create all sorts of uh, reports here. So uh, going back to team content, uh, library authored reports. We'll be working on dashboards at a later date for this. Uh, library.solution has dashboards available for circulation people. And then frequently used branch reports, reports packages, frequently used reports. So again, you can create lots of folder structures here and put reports in there and give people access to specific types of folders. They can go in and, and, and edit those and run those. Or of course, as I've shown you here, you have the ability within Cognos to, uh, to create a report, schedule it and deliver it as a document to users without them having to go off and search for that data, without them having to log into the Cognos. It's delivered on their desktop in the morning with their coffee, and they can click on it, and they can view the data that they need or the information that they need. So there's a brief overview of what we can do on Cognos. And with that, I am going to go back to webinar next day, and we will just quickly go through all the way through to questions and answers. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. So. <clears throat> yes, thank you so much, Jerry. Um, just looking at the questions, um, one of the questions that we got was, can TLC write custom reports for our library? Yes, we can. Okay, and is there an additional, um, is there an additional charge or cost associated with Cognos reports, or is it included? 
It depends. Uh, there, are, there are circumstances where we're looking at the reports and we're saying, oh, that's a definite hole in our reporting suite. Uh, and that's a report we need to do. Um, we haven't done it yet because no one's asked us for it, but uh, now's the time. So in those cases, we would deliver it. Um, if it's more of a very specialized report that is very specific to an individual library, uh, then there's a chance that we might charge something in the region of $60, $100, something like that to uh, to write that report, the we used to um, we used to provide that service where we do custom reporting, and we will still do so. But uh, what we're trying to do with Cognos is to create an ad hoc report generator that is accessible and usable by our users, by the typical car library. So um, even if you don't have a lot of SQL knowledge, if you understand basic database structure and you understand the idea of tables and fields within and with some training, uh, you should be able to manage uh, quite a few of the reports you need without having to come to us for that. I hope that helps answer that. It's a little bit of a depends answer there. Yeah. But, uh, no, oh, that was actually our only question. Okay, um, cool. <laughs> right, that's fine. All right. So okay. um, I do have one final uh, question. It's a poll with, uh, just to want to know if you'd like to hear more information from us. Just, um, yeah, just let us know. Right. And with that, I'm going to say, just say thank you for joining okay. us today. And thank you, Jerry, for the okay. webinar on Cognos. Right. If you want to catch the replay of today's webinar, that will be available starting tomorrow at tlcdelivers.com slash webinar. We have a number okay. of webinars lined up for September. So we hope to see you back here again for another webinar Wednesday. Thank you. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone.